Okay, this is a video response to uh, this video. I've never really used this camera like this, so I have no real idea how this is going to turn out. But uh, I've looked at this, and there are a lot of people who say that uh, it's not really going to be possible the way that it was shown. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll through this just a little bit. Let's skip ahead. And pause. You can see here, what has initially happened is the stiffer structure of the Malibu has actually driven through and pushed the frame rail aside and is now in contact with the wheel um, which is putting a leverage motion on the frame. Now I went out and found a little resource that shows a 58. But the, uh, the 58, and the 59, and the 60, they all have the same style of frame. i roll up here. Now, this is an X frame. Now, you also have to remember that that car had a, a straight six which is a lot narrower engine which is going to have thinner engine mounts and more leverage. Um, this is the structure that the uh, the Malibu hit on the Bel Air. You see, there's pretty much nothing there. Um, the X frame ties together in the middle, um, almost underneath the driver's seat on the uh, Bel Air. So what you end up getting is, with an impact through this section here, uh, you have a lot of leverage that's going to apply to here, and you can actually see in the video as you look through the later sections. Of course, how deeply that went in. Eventually, it will show the other side. Let me go ahead and just jump a little. Okay, went a little too far. I'm doing this on the camera screen. Now, I'll get to pause. Okay, you can see that the wheel has pulled over. Um, you can also see basically the entire front of the car has pulled over and how deeply that's gone in, and a little explosion of rust here as well. Um, what's happened is the frame is given. It's collapsed right about here, and it's bent over and sent the center section over towards the passenger side of the car. Now, when it did that, that wheel collapsed, and drove itself well in underneath the body and uh, that's where you saw on the interior videos the chassis uh, or the dashboard essentially coming back. Now this is a, a 58 body but it's built pretty much the same as the 59. You just don't have the bat wings. Now if you look real closely at this you can see that there are a lot of design flaws as far as strength goes. Um, firstly you've got this big firewall assembly here which is a pretty, ch pretty stiff structure all by itself but it is only bolted to the frame, or attached to the frame, uh, through this little section here. Now, if you have something like a wheel that's going to come up and hit the firewall in this section, that's going to shove back, and what you're going to get is a bending motion to start with before other things start to fail that uh, essentially collapses the firewall inwards, and it's made worse because this structure here, as it bends, is going to impart a downward force um, more leverage on the firewall there, so that's why it crushed in so badly. Um, you can also see in the remainder of the video, I hope I don't have to cough here in a second, <coughs> pardon me, that the uh, actual outside body has been distorted too, and that's where the frame collapsed and uh, shoved towards the outside of the vehicle. It's a pretty, pretty heinous collision. Let me pause this here again one more time. But you can see the stiffer structure of the Malibu essentially took the entire impact by itself. The, the wheel is still upright. It's still roughly in the same position. On modern cars, these wheels are designed, and the suspension is designed to move straight back and uh, impact with the, uh, uh, the unibody, the frame rail chassis, and the reinforced section here where the roll pan is. Very stiff structure. Um, you've also got a more modern feature here, and there's a huge difference between these two cars where the engine would have rolled backwards and more than likely has struck the ground underneath the car and that absorbs quite a bit of the uh, the energy and the impact. On the uh, the 59 Bel Air, back to here, the way that the frame is put together you don't actually have the same structure as you do in even a 65 or, or a 70 model car where basically the engine doesn't 
dive. It doesn't move. It stays in the same plane when it's struck, and that actually makes it perform worse because the engine's going to essentially be a hinge. Um, in a five or six year later car, one with the uh, the straight frame, what you would have ended up with was the uh, the engine would have taken a rotation downwards from the top. The engine mount probably, or rather the, uh, the transmission mount probably would have torn loose or uh, or bent. Um, and the tail shaft would have struck the pavement and the engine would have continued on backwards and that absorbs a lot of the energy. And of course that's 60s and 70s style um, crash absorption. You also would have had a front subframe uh, connector across the front here um, or possibly the bumper mount itself uh, depending on the age of the car. That would have helped mitigate on a regular perimeter frame uh, that one frame rail collapsing and causing the intrusion into the car. Um, it was in an innovative design, you know, and it saved a lot of weight. And it's actually part of one of the one of the reasons why the uh, the tests were so spectacular is because the six cylinder manual car that they tested was only 3,600 pounds. Um, that's 200 pounds more than the Chevy Malibu. You know, 200 pounds is one passenger. It's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Um, the leverage forces are higher on the uh, Bel Air. Essentially, you've got the same amount of metal doing or attempting to do the same job in a much longer space, which means just inherently, if you push on that part of the metal, you've got that much more force in the middle of the beam. Um, and plus, it's not a direct impact. If you do, a, again, as I said in the front, in the beginning of the video, a frontal impact on that beam, you've got a side force to deal with. And essentially, the car is going to buckle right here and collapse along that side. And I'm pretty sure that's what we saw. So uh, hopefully this helps uh, quell some of the uh, confusion about the video, about how it could be faked, uh, because it looks pretty real to me. Now, I'm not a professional. I, I stayed at the Holiday Inn last night, or however that's supposed to go. But uh, old Dr. Strange gun here uh, got a pretty keen mind for the engineering and uh, I think I'm pretty close on this. Um, any questions? I'm happy to answer. Thank you.